Hello everyone, my name is Shelly Calhoun-Jones, I'm a Principal Technologist here at Cohesity. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Cohesity Data Protect to protect on-prem and cloud-based workloads. But why is this important? Many companies today are managing hybrid and multi-cloud environments. To reduce their infrastructure burden, organizations are moving from a capital to an operational expense type model. Now in the past, when data centers were managed on-prem, organizations had to plan out their costs to cover hardware, staffing, and other resources. However, with cloud services, operational expenses are used, which means that you can use a pay-as-you-go approach. This type of approach allows companies to get the latest innovations and become more agile. Now in this context, we're going to explore how this approach can be used with AWS workloads. In this video, we'll take a tour of Cohesity Data Protect, protect an EC2 instance, and recover an RDS instance. Right now, I'm currently on the global page. To access Data Protect, I can select the app selector, and from here, I can either choose security clusters that are either on-prem or in the cloud. And then once I select Data Protect, I'll see a unified view of our environment. In the Sources section, you have the ability to set up protection for either virtual or physical workloads. You also have the ability to set up protection for databases and applications. Now in this section, you'll see that we have a variety of different resources, including AWS accounts. And up at the top, you have the ability to filter by sources or also filter by region. And uh, we're going to take a look at our AWS account. So in this example, we have deployed our source. We're, we're looking at a, a current source that we have set up uh, within this environment. And you'll notice that we have tabs for both EC2 and RDS. Do you note that S3 support is coming soon? Uh, these tabs display both protected and unprotected resources. And if I want to protect a new resource, oh, looks like my SCGA server is already protected. All right. So if I want to protect a new resource, ooh, look, we got an EC2 demo server. I can just highlight it and uh, click on the shield. And what this will do is it'll open up a new screen where I can actually choose a protection policy. Now, it's important noting that Cohesity Data Protect offers two options for Amazon EC2 backups. Uh, the first option would be to use an AWS snapshot. And what an AWS snapshot does is that it will use the native snapshots function to protect your EC2 instances and will actually store them in the same AWS account and region as the source EC2 instance. So if you have EC2 instances within North Virginia, and you need to create a snapshot, it will, it will actually store those snapshots uh, within the North Virginia region. The other approach would be to use the Cohesity Snapshot feature. And what this does is it will enable Cohesity Data Protect to ingest the backup data to an AWS region supported by the Cohesity Data Protect service. You can find our supported regions within our documentation uh, but the idea is that this is, would be the destination region that we saw during that source registration. So if I were to choose North Virginia or Northern California as my destination region, it's going to save the snapshots to that region in a Cohesity native format. And so by using the Cohesity managed settings, what this means is that we can take a more air-gapped approach and it also gives us the ability to perform either folder or file level recoveries. So it does give you some extended functionality and you can use either one or the other, or you can even maybe choose to use both if you want to make sure that you have uh, multiple backups of your data for a mission critical workload. But for this demonstration, let's go ahead and just click on protect and we're gonna take a closer look at a protection policy. In Cohesity Data Protect, a policy is a reusable collection of settings 
which define the how and when in which an object from a source are protected. And you can actually create as many policies as you need, depending on the use case. And uh, if we click on the gold policy, uh, we can see that we have some pre-configured backup and data retention settings. But I could also choose to add some additional options. For example, I may want to go in and perform a periodic full backup. I could choose to run a periodic full backup every day, or maybe I want to choose to run it maybe once a week on Wednesdays. I have the ability to go in and configure um, additional settings depending on the type of workload that I'm looking to protect. Also, you'll notice that we have the ability to choose quiet times. If you do have certain times during the week where you perform uh, periodic maintenance, you could choose to um, pick a particular quiet time window, and you can also go in and customize uh, the data retention settings. Just a couple other features that I want to show you uh, before we jump in and do a recovery would be the activity window, which gives you a full list of recent backups and it uses a timeline format. I have the ability to filter based off of region, uh, whether or not the task was successful, and also I can filter based off of the source type. I can even go in and change the date range. Maybe I want to look at backup activity that's happened uh, over the last week or maybe over the past 30 days. Now, in this example, we can see that our backup did succeed uh, for our EC2 instance that we protected earlier. And if I click on that, uh, what it will do is it'll give me a breakdown of the backup activity, including whether or not uh, we met our SLA. If I want more information about the event, I can also just click on the summary and it will show me the policy information that it used. And if I want to get even more information about the activity, I can just click on the object itself and I can drill down and look at the specific uh, task activity. So as you can see, this will provide us an entire timeline of the task being added to the queue, uh, retrieving items for the backup process and completing the backup job. But that leads to the question, what if we need to recover? And so let's take a look at the recovery process uh, within Cohesity Data Protect. In fact, we're going to look at a different resource. We're going to look at an RDS database. So I'm going to click on Tag MySQL3, choose Recover, and we're going to recover to a new location. I'm going to choose our AWS account ID. We're going to go ahead and restore or recover to North Virginia. And because this is a test, I'm just going to use our default VPC here. If you're working in production, you're probably going to have a specific VPC and subnet that you'll restore to and also a security group associated with it. Uh, AWS defines security groups as essentially acting like a host-based firewall. So it gives you the ability to deploy specific firewall rules to your EC2 instances and you can break them down based off of the role. So in this example, we're going to specify our network settings. We're also going to give our uh, database a name. So let me just call this <laughs> Data Protect Demo. And um, I am going to select some additional options which you can configure uh, within Amazon RDS. Uh, just to quickly walk you through these recovery options, because I, I think they're really, really cool that you can actually go in and configure these uh, when you're doing the recovery. Uh, Multi-EC deployment, uh, what this means is that if your RDS runs in multiple availability zones, uh, you have the ability to have both a primary and a standby copy of your database for high availability. And this would be like if you're if you're doing a recovery to a production environment. We're, we're recovering to test, so I'm going to leave that option turned off for right now. Um, but also you'll see here that we have other options like IAM database authentication. Uh, what this does is it allows you to connect to, to log who's connecting to your RDS database. It'll actually record who within your organization is authenticated and also who has permissions 
uh, Cheer RDS resources. And it does this by using the IAM service, uh, which is available within your AWS account. Really, really cool. And then also you'll see that we have the ability to turn on public accessibility. I'm going to go ahead and leave that turned off. And then also we have the ability to copy our tags to our snapshots. So let's imagine that we want to tag this particular RDS database with a cost center because we want to make sure that we're uh, breaking down our, our expenses, you know, based off of department. Uh, you could create a tag for that. Uh, you could create a tag just flagging this as a uh, test or staging resource. Uh, you could create a tag for, you know, things like security automation. So the sky's the limit with tags, but I, I definitely recommend tag early and tag often because it really does allow you to kind of delineate who within your organization is using these resources and make sure that you have your um, AWS account running smoothly. So uh, one other feature I want to just quickly call out here before we start the uh, recovery process would be auto miner version upgrade. And what this does is allows your database to automatically get upgraded when a new miner uh, database engine is available. So a good example would be maybe you're running an RDS database in MySQL and a new security enhancement comes out. What this means is that AWS will upgrade the instance for you. So you don't have to schedule a maintenance window to perform the maintenance. Amazon will deploy the updates for you. So that's auto minor version upgrade, which is a little bit of a mouthful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just specify a name uh, for this recovery. And we'll just call this SCJ test. And then we'll click on recover. So if I go back to my timeline, we now see that a recovery is running. And that actually completes the demonstration. Uh, we did a tour of Cohesity Data Protect. We protected an EC2 instance and went through the recovery process of an RDS instance. Thanks for watching.